We are now going to do question 12 of the addendum. We're going through the topics of uh, modern physics here. Uh, question 12 says, the main reason electrons occupy discrete orbits in an atom is because A, energy levels are quantized. B, electric forces act over quantized distances. C, angular momentum of electrons is quantized. D, the circumference of each orbit is an integral multiple of electron wavelengths. Some of these choices might actually be true. However, we want to know, uh, we want to get to the bottom of the main reason. Why, what is the main reason that we could explain that electrons uh, or the electron orbits are discrete and they occupy orbits that we call n equals 1, n equals 2? Well, the first uh, choice says energy levels are quantized. That is true. The energy levels are quantized. This comes from Planck's concept of the quanti quantization of energy uh, and uh, his hypothesis. So this comes around the turn of the century, around 1900s, uh, where uh, Planck, Max Planck um, uh, put forth the concept of the energy and the quanta. Um, and it is true that the electron orbits here, uh, this, this is the nucleus, they all occupy different orbits. And each orbit has different energy. As you go from the n equals 1 orbit to the n equals 2 orbit, the energy is less. From the n equals 2 to the n equals 3 orbit, the energy is even less, and then so on and so forth, the energy decreases, and the energy is quantized. But this doesn't get to the bottom of why this energy is quantized. So uh, choice B says, electric forces act over quantized distances. So is, the, is it the main reason that the electric force between the nucleus and the electron, is, does that act over quantized distances? Uh, well, not really. The distance doesn't need to be quantized. Um, this one is not really true. So uh, it doesn't have the distance itself doesn't have to be quantized in order to explain why the electron orbits are quantized. C says angular momentum of electrons is quantized. That is actually true. This was hypothesized by uh, Bohr in 1913. A uh, Danish astronomer named Niels Bohr hypothesized that the angular momentum of the electron, L, yeah, must be certain multiples of uh, the Planck's constant. So uh, angular momentum is nvr, and that is equal to a certain multiple n h over 2 pi. And uh, h over 2 pi is uh, sometimes called h bar. So <coughs> using this um, assumption, he was able to show that he could predict the spectral lines of a hydrogen atom, known as the bomber lines. So it was definitely true. It came out that the explanation of the bomber lines required the quantization of angular momentum. But that in and of itself did not explain why the angular momentum is quantized. So this one doesn't still get to the bottom of the quantization of the electron orbits. D is the answer. D, the circumference of each orbit is an integral multiple of electron wavelengths. Okay, this one was proposed by de Broglie, de Broglie in the 1920s. This was offered as an alternate explanation of why the angular momentum was quantized and why the electron had to occupy certain orbits. And I believe that this goes more to the root reason of why we have different orbits that the electron can occupy, okay? He envisioned the electron as a wave. So this goes to the particle wave duality of um, uh, matter. At the very core of nature, everything is both a wave and a particle. So uh, he argued that the wavelength the wavelength of any particle happens to be equal to Planck's constant over its momentum P, okay? So that is also true about us. If I am traveling at a certain velocity, I myself am a wave, right? So if you are a person or a ball or a car or anything, 
with a certain mass and a velocity, you have momentum, and the momentum is equal to the product of the mass and velocity. Uh, mass times the velocity, okay? And so, therefore, <coughs> I am actually a wave, but I am a very localized wave. Why? Well, because my wavelength is very small, okay? My wavelength, which happens to be Planck's constant. Planck's constant is a very, very small number. 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by my mass. So if I have a mass of like 80 kilogram, so my mass is going to be huge. My velocity is also going to be huge, okay? Maybe two meters per second or something, or one meter per second. So what's going to happen? Well, my wavelength is going to be a very small uh, number. And so essentially I can be considered like a wave like this. Okay? So my wave nature is almost non-noticeable uh, because I have such a small, small wavelength, okay? Well, same thing goes true with particles, but this time particles have a much, much smaller mass. Much, much smaller mass where wavelength is spread out more. And so now their wave nature is more noticeable. So here's what uh, de Broglie argued. De Broglie argued that the electron orbits can be explained due to the fact that the electron can be thought of as a wave with a certain wavelength, right? And the circumference of each orbit is an integral multiple of the electron wavelength, okay? So he said the circumference of the orbit around the nucleus, which is uh, 2 pi r in the n equals 1 orbit, it would be 1 multiple of the wavelength. Then that would be the n equals 1 orbit, right? In the n equals 2 orbit, the circumference would be equal to 2 times the wavelength, and therefore n is 2, okay? And then if uh, the third orbit, 2 pi r, it would be 3 times the wavelength, <coughs> okay? So as we are moving out, we're trying to fit more waves into the circumference of the electron. So this would be the uh, equivalent of what we did when we learned about string waves. And we said when a string is uh, uh, tied at both ends and allowed to resonate, certain number of wavelengths have to resonate. In that case, it, it could have been a certain number of half wavelengths, right? And the equation was uh, n times half a wavelength must be equal to the length of the string, right? In this case, full waves have to fit into the circumference of the uh, atom, right? It can't be half waves. So in this case, it could have been like this. This is a half a wave, okay? So this would be n equals one. <coughs> that would be... Uh, Half a wave is equal to the length of the string. N equals two would be what? A complete wave. So it goes up, down, up. Up, down, up. Okay? <coughs> and then we would have N equals three. They would be up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, up. And then N equals four. Up, down, up down, so it goes up, down, up, down, and then back up, okay? Down, up, down, up, down. So in this is a complete wave, fits into the length of the string, and this is twice a wave that fits into the length of the string. Now, this is what it's going to be equivalent. So if I wanted to draw this, how would I visualize this? Well, this middle line would be the circumference around the uh, atom, right? So we would do, uh, we could do a dotted line like this. What would the n equals one orbit in this sense look like? n equals one orbit, because I have to fit a complete wave, it would look like the n equals two of the string. It would go up, down, and then back up, right? So I could start here, okay? I would go up. By the time I get halfway, I have to come back and cross, right? So it would go up, 
and then go halfway, cross. Then go in, and then go back out. So it looks like Okay, so this would be n equals 1. And I could also do down, up, and then down. So that would look like what? Down. And then cross it, and then up. Okay, so this would be uh, this part right here. Up, and then cross, and then go in, and then go down, cross, go up, and then go this way. So this according to the string and wave concept of the electron, you're feeding a complete wave of the electron into the uh, length of the, uh, the circumference. How, what would the n equals two look like? It would look like this. You would have the, it would be a bigger circumference, right? So here's the nucleus and then it would be bigger. We would have to go farther out. So it would start here. And then that would be equivalent to the n equals 4 here, which is fitting two complete waves. Up, down, up, up, down, up. So basically, we would have to start here. By the time we go up and down, we would, it would be the quarter. So up, down, up, okay? And then goes up, down, up, okay? Goes like this, and then we would go down, up, down, up, like this. <coughs> okay, so up, down, up, down, and then down, up, down, up. Okay, what would n equals 3 look like? And then I'll do one more, and then you got the idea from there. Okay, so this time, uh, by the time you get to, so you be you have to be able to fit three of these. So, um, so in order to fit three of these, this one would have to be uh, at 120 degrees, right? Roughly about 120 degrees and another 120 degrees. So you go up, down, up, down, up down like that okay and then you would do like this like this like this like this like this like this so this would be n equals three okay so you could keep doing that so <coughs> from Bohr's point of view the wave nature of the electron required that the um, the electrons orbit around the nucleus only have certain discrete radii so that a complete multiples of the electrons wavelength would fit around the nucleus, right? So from this conclusion, we're going to see that it leads to the same requirement as angular momentum. So if circumference is equal to n multiples of the uh, wavelength, right, what's the wavelength equal to? Uh, Planck's constant over momentum. So if this momentum goes over there and the 2 pi comes down here, what's going to happen? P times R and then bring the 2 pi down here. N H over 2 pi. Well, what's momentum? It's equal to MV. Linear momentum. What's R? R is R. That's equal to Integer multiples of h over 2 pi, and h over 2 pi is called h bar. So angular momentum of the electron, therefore, is integer multiple of h over 2 pi, which leads to Bohr's theory. So you see how um, uh, uh, de Broglie's theory leads to Bohr's theory, and then once we can conclude that the angular momentum is quantized, we can therefore calculate what the energy of the electron is, and we will also see that the energy of the electron is also quantized, and from there we can then calculate 
what happens when the electron jumps from one orbit to the other, it releases a certain photon, and then we can predict what the spectral lines of the uh, hydrogen atom is and what other, the spectral lines of the other atoms. Now, in order to do more complex atoms, to fully analyze this, you need quantum physics, which is Schrodinger, Erwin Schrodinger's contribution to physics. <coughs> and that is a more complex topic that you cover in a more uh, higher level physics courses, okay? So um, I hope this gives you a little bit of an understanding of these concepts, okay? Thank you very much. Bye.